everyone, I'm Ishwari. In this video, we're going to go over some high yield stuff in hematology focusing majorly on red blood cells. To make this interesting, we'll solve questions and understand the pathology simultaneously. Let's get started. Question number one. All types of microcytic anemia have low iron levels. Option A, true. Option B, false. The correct answer is false. Anemia is considered microcytic if the mean corpuscular volume is below 18. This means that the red blood cells are smaller than normal. This happens when the components that form RBCs are insufficient. It's like if you have lesser batter, you make smaller pancakes. Microcytic anemia can arise if any of these components are deficient or missing. If iron is deficient, it gives rise to iron deficiency anemia. In thalassemia, there is a decrease in the synthesis of the globin chain of hemoglobin. Iron and protoporphyrin combine to give rise to heme. This step takes place in the presence of ferrochelidase. Increased lead levels inhibit this step. This is how lead poisoning can cause microcytic anemia. Protoporphyrin is formed when glycine and succinyl-CoA are combined together. This takes place in the presence of vitamin B6 and the enzyme ALAS. People who have sideroblastic anemia either have a vitamin B6 deficiency or lack this enzyme. So in such cases, iron is available but the other components aren't. So, not all types of microcytic anemia have low iron levels. Question number 2. A patient with sickle cell disease is likely to have Option A. Schisticides Option B. Heinz bodies Option C. Howell jolly bodies Option D. Normal RBC morphology The answer to this question is Howell jolly bodies. People with sickle cell anemia can have recurrent splenic infarcts. This can lead to fibrosis and a decrease in the function of the spleen. A normal spleen removes the nuclear remnants of red blood cells. In patients with sickle cell disease, since the function of the spleen is lost, the nuclear remnants of the RBCs remain in the cells and form the whole jolly bodies. Schisticides are usually seen in hemolytic anemia which is traumatic in nature such as DIC, HUS and TTP. Heinz bodies are seen in G6PD deficiency. This is because the oxidative stress breaks the hemoglobin down. Question number 3. Which of the following is correct with respect to paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria? Option A. Coombs positive. Option B. High hepcidin. Option C, low haptoglobin. Option D, low levels of C1 esterase inhibitor. The answer to this question is low haptoglobin. GPI is a molecule which prevents the breakdown of red blood cells by complement. In paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, there is impaired synthesis of GPI. So, the red blood cells undergo intravascular hemolysis by complement. Since this is done by complement and not by antibodies, the Coombs test will be negative. When cells undergo hemolysis, they release hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is taken up by haptoglobin, so the free haptoglobin levels will be low. Hepcidin is high in anemia of chronic disease. C1 esterase inhibitor levels are low in hereditary angioedema. Question number 4. A patient is being evaluated for anemia. There is ferrocytes present in the blood smear. The patient is curious to know what caused his condition. What do you think? Option A. Vitamin deficiency. Option B. Hereditary. Option C. Infection. Option D. Autoimmune. The answer to this question is autoimmune. The diagnosis is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. This is seen when antibodies are formed against red blood cells. Since antibodies are involved, the Coombs test is positive. Spherocytes are also seen in hereditary spherocytosis, but in such cases, Coombs test will be negative. 
Although infection can trigger autoimmune hemolytic anemia, it isn't the direct cause. Vitamin deficiency would not present with such features. We've now come to the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. If this was helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more math videos, quizzes and study tips. Thank you.